you very much, Bob, for the introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Cicely Saunders Institute, for uh, the opportunity to partner with you this afternoon and in the future on this really important uh, piece of work. Uh, what I um, need to do is to make a case for why we need to be involved in this work. And uh, I probably don't have to do that uh, very hard at all because uh, so many of you have been talking to me and to others that help the hospices for a very long time about the need for this work. So if you're one of those, and I know that there are many people here who have been badgering on about it for quite a while, uh, this is our response. This is the beginning of a really important piece of work that we want to do with you and with other partners. Uh, and we, we hope that uh, you'll really contribute today to help us get it right. What I thought I'd do in the next 20 minutes is to talk about why bother uh, in really focusing on outcomes in particular, why we need to get going now, uh, what we should be considering and your views uh, during the course of the afternoon will be really important for us uh, to listen to and who else needs to be involved. And I'm going to draw on three perspectives. I'm going to draw uh, very much on the work that the Commission into the Future of Hospice Care did, which reported last October. Uh, that was a very important piece of work that I was part of. And in it, there were a number of really important recommendations, a number of very important observations about the hospice sector uh, that could certainly be applied to uh, broader providers of specialist palliative care as well that I'm going to share with you. I'm also going to talk about my uh, experience at Help the Hospices as a clinical lead and some of the frustrations that I've experienced uh, when you don't, uh, aren't using outcomes and you don't have that kind of data, particularly to advocate for hospice care to government um, and other influences. <clears throat> and finally, I'm going to talk from my role at St Joseph's where I was the clinical director for a number of years. So I want to start... Uh, by asking you uh, to do a bit of work with me. So could everybody stand up who's either delivering or managing a hospice or a specialist palliative care service? It's really important because I think it's specifically these things that we really believe that developing some kind of outcome framework uh, that we all buy into uh, can, can make. And uh, that's our aspiration for today and for the work that we want to do uh, with you in the future. So the, let's, let's go back to the beginning and just make sure that we're all on the same page about why it's important and the first thing to say is we need to know what difference we make at a whole variety of uh, levels. We need to know locally, and that's perhaps most important because we're all here uh, because we've got some kind of burden for really changing the experience of people who are dying or facing loss. So at local level, we need outcomes data to plan for service improvement, service developments, not only within our services, but in the broader health and social economy that we're working in. And we importantly need to confirm our value to our commissioners more and more so. At national level, we need a much more sophisticated understanding of the sector. Uh, Help the Hospices is often criticised for not lobbying hard enough on behalf of hospices. Uh, and, I, and, and, and really supporting the work of hospices, but without data to provide evidence of the value of hospice care, it's extremely difficult to do. The other thing is that we really want to help hospices de develop the most effective and cost-effective models of care that are fit for the future. And again, that's extremely difficult when you know a lot about structure and process, but you know very little about outcome. And uh, perhaps uh, excitingly and more less well, well known is that I think we really could, if we got our outcomes measures right, if we bought into a shared framework and collected data together, we could work much better at international level in discerning how hospice and specialist palliative care 
is best delivered in the future. The question about why bother now, there's something around uh, current demands that mean that this time is right. It was probably right a few years ago to do, but it's certainly right to start now and not wait another two years. So um, one of the important things is about uh, clinician-driven curiosity. Um, you know, what, what makes a difference in the practice that we are uh, uh, involved in as, as clinicians and people directly delivered in care? For leaders in the sector, there must be some really important scrutiny about uh, what we're doing and what really makes a difference uh, in terms of how we allocate our resources and where we invest in the future. <coughs> Commissioners are increasingly outcomes focused and make increasing demands on us for data that confirms uh, the, importance that, the important contribution that we make. And when this is put against how much they perceive we cost, uh, it's even more important we're able to show uh, the difference that we make. And there's increasing regulatory requirements that move us to outcomes. And finally, but, but very importantly, there's something about the public interest, uh, quality accounts but moving beyond, uh, which is about what, what can people expect from us, uh, either as users or people who support us. And I wonder whether, um, it, it, in this room, I won't ask you, if, if you hadn't stood up so re read, readily in the last bit, I might have made you stand again. But there's something, in, I reckon for most people in this room, you will fit into one of these uh, categories. So I charge organisations as a whole to think very carefully about it. The Commission um, did look uh, very critically at what the future challenges for hospices might be, but as I said at the beginning, they're not only challenges for hospices, they're for any specialist palliative care provider. And this was a, an important quotation from a piece of work that was led by somebody called Greg Parston. He pulled together the great and the good, not just in hospice and end-of-life care, but in health and social care policy as well. And this was one of the conclusions. It may not be raining hard yet, but we can be sure it will be soon. And the kind of key challenges that that particular meeting identified for hospices were the demographic and epidemiological changes that I don't need to tell you about today. Uh, this shift towards outcome-orientated healthcare, increasing competition in the health and social care systems uh, for contracts, uh, and the reducing levels of statutory funding that exist. Uh, and even if they're not reducing currently, they're certainly not increasing for the majority of providers. When they looked at that and identified some key operating principles for hospices, there were two that I think are really important today. One was about planning, analysing and acting on good data. This idea about rectifying the frequently appalling lack of measurement of performance. Um, and telling the clear story and marketing it and not simply doing it uh, in the way that we've always done it, which is through uh, user satisfaction. And this comment on the right-hand side was a quote from one of the working groups uh, that day, which talked about the quality of data that we need. It's about it being collected over time at patient level and in a way that enables uh, providers and others to drill down uh, but also to look at it uh, across a period uh, of time as well. In the final recommendations uh, from the Commission, uh, step two was about strengthening understanding of the contribution of hospice, hospice care, and this was about making sure that it had a very important position in the future uh, delivery um, of end-of-life care. And it called for hospices, their leadership organisations uh, like Help the Hospices and other players, including academic centres, to work together to establish a key, key and evidence-based description of the, role, of the role of hospices. And you can see it lower down and another cut talks about telling an evidence-based story in relation to anticipated outcomes and the degree to which they're achieved. So, what should we be covering uh, uh, in, in the kind of framework that we want to develop? So there's something about knowing more about who benefits uh, from the care that we deliver and how, how much they improve, 
when in their trajectory uh, that uh, happens, with what kind of combination of care. Very often we're working in partnership with hospitals, with primary care, um, with a whole host of other services, and how similar or different is the picture uh, between hospices. And certainly in uh, my work at Help the Hospices, we talk as though the ho all hospices provide the same service to the same group of people. And the reality that you and I know is that that isn't the case at all. Uh, I, don't even, uh, I couldn't even be confident that we deliver the same sort of care to two people in uh, neighbouring beds, actually. Some of them have very complex and uh, multiple needs, some don't. Um, some have um, uh, uh, conditions that are very easily managed, uh, some don't. And um, when my staff talk about complexity, uh, it's very subjective. A lot of it is around their emotional response to it. It's not about an uh, objective perspective on whether their needs are complex, and if so, what the type of complexity uh, that, that is. So we need lots of different kinds of data, and I think it's important to say at this point that I'm not in any way, uh, in putting up this slide, suggesting that we don't need patient stories. But for the purposes of today, we're talking about the very uh, uh, important gap that exists around data at individual patient and family level that can help us discern stuff like their complexity, where they are, where they are in their condition, uh, and what difference we really make to them uh, in data terms. There are. Uh, people who've been working with Help the Hospices on the framework will know that we are not happy simply to see outcomes as clinical outcomes. Outcomes of hospice care are not only clinical outcomes. We do lots of other things like uh, working with volunteers, uh, like, in, like participatory care, in, uh, like participatory work with members of the community, uh, and we're not saying in this framework that that isn't important or it isn't something we might want to attend to in the future, but for the purposes of today, we're focusing very much on what we do for patients and families. <coughs> so who needs to be involved? Um, I think it's really important that we recognise that this isn't just uh, a, a bit of work that our, either our data managers need to do or our uh, medics, uh, by way of example. We need to, to involve a whole group of people and a whole number of processes. So we need much better local data. We need local data that can be scrutinised, uh, compared with other services and looked at uh, over a length of time. And we need much more sophisticated mechanisms for collecting, analysing and presenting the data at local and national levels. Uh, so many hospices uh, do their MDS return to National Council but never scrutinise that data for themselves. And that's a, a real pity for them and it also means that there isn't the learning at local level even if it happens at national level. We need really strong intelligence. Uh, people like me need some real help uh, from uh, academics and others about what data to collect, how to interpret it and act in response. And then we need the change agents, whether that's um, local services, whether that's uh, help the hospices uh, or whether that's government, uh, there are people that need to then act on the data in order to make sure that people uh, inevitably uh, improve in the care that they get. We do need strong partnerships and it's fantastic to see so many hospices. It's great to see people from other services as well. We've got a lot to learn from you. Uh, and it's terrific to be here uh, as Help the Hospices with so many of our members. Uh, we do need the Cicely Saunders Institute and the uh, funders and the supporters of CSI. Uh, the National Council for Palliative Care is an organisation we're working with increasingly to try and really establish what kind of data we collect in the future and how we make that national minimum data set really work for you as well as working for the national organisations that, that need that data so badly. 
Terrific to have B and NHS IQ on board. And of course, Public Health England is equally important and have been driving a lot of the developments, uh, particularly around data improvement. So just to finish then, um, we, I, I probably didn't need to make a case for working on outcomes, but I do want to make a case about how we do it. And uh, that's something about really working hard collectively. I have tried uh, with member hospices to think about a framework uh, on our own, and I, I just couldn't do it. Um, and I don't believe that that was due to lack of effort. It's to do with only having uh, a, very, uh, a very narrow perspective. So we, we need uh, hospices, we need help the hospices to be involved, and we certainly need our academic uh, colleagues as well as other people working in health and social care uh, uh, nationally. It's absolutely vital to our success, so let's begin now and start the momentum and really give it all that we can uh, so that we have something to deliver in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And we've got to really move away from localism on this and become sector strong. It is so important that we don't say, well, it's fine if you want to do that, but we're going to carry on using our own measures. Uh, it's fine if you want to do that, but we're going to collect our own data and just keep it to us. Actually, we need to do this all together uh, as a sector. And we need to bring together the separate activities in our various organisations to get it right. So this is about getting clinicians, working alongside data managers, getting alongside senior managers uh, and, and, and anybody who's doing research in our organisations. And I do honestly believe that we could do something terrific together, which is why it's so good to see so many people here. So I'm going to finish there, I think, and hand over to Fliss. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>